Look, man, we don't do this very often, but today we're going to hit you with a good one, bud. We're going to review and do a critique of this death in Navy SEAL training exposes a culture of brutality, cheating, and drugs. We're going to go through this New York Times article. We're going to drop a little fire in here and see if you guys can't get a little insight about what's really going on. Some of this shit is just straight outlandish, but hey, we're going to go through this article, man. The basis of the story... You know, a couple guys in, in Buds died, dude died of Sype, which is basically swimmer-induced pulmonary edema, which is uh, better known as pneumonia. Let's get to it. So Dave Phillips wrote this article, man. I'm just going to tell you, active duty personnel, not really sure what, what this dude's talking about. I don't know Dave Phillips, but we're going to get into this. We're going to talk some real talk about this article. Kyle Mullins, man, I'm going to send a shout out to you and your family, man. You paid the ultimate price. Hey, I, I apologize. I'm not trying to bang on you at all. But the truth of the matter is, you just had weak genes, bro. You had weak genes. You went into an institution that just doesn't care about weak genes. Weak genes get weeded out. That's the facts, Jack. So, we're going to talk about Kyle a little bit today. Kind of some of his choices. What I see going on with all the kids that I have in training and then we're going to, you know, go into this article. 24-year-old arrived on the California coast. They're trying to paint a pretty picture of buds. Let's call it what it is, man. This dude checked into hell. Okay, so 24 years old, checked into hell. He was a state champion defensive end in high school, captain of the Yale football team. Okay, all of that in a box of Wheaties will get you fucking nothing. All right, everybody at SEAL training is fucking the best of the best. By the middle of the course's third week, Continual gut punch, physical, mental hardship, sleep deprivation, and hypothermia that the SEALs call Hell Week. The six foot four athlete from Mattapan, New Jersey, was dead eyed with exhaustion, riddled with infection, and coughing up blood from lungs that were so full of fluid. Others who were there said that he sounded like he was gargling. Yup. I know my man Dale Wooden was riding in the van gargling for the whole Hell Week. So, yup. We in Hell Week, man gargling, yup, that's pretty normal. Course began with 110 individuals. By the middle of Hell Week, 189 individuals had quit or been brought down by injury. So let's talk the facts, Jack. Out of 210 men that start bow, they only class up with like 109. So 100 of those people quit in the first week. That's the facts. They went into training and another... 70 people quit in the first couple of weeks. That's just how it is. Like the place is an animal. It's a beast. Don't get it confused. The numbers are the numbers. People quit in this institution. Seaman Mullins kept on slogging for days, splitting up blood all the while. The instructors and the medics conducted the course, perhaps out of admiration for his grit, didn't stop him. Ain't nobody pulling the plug on you at Bud's. If you don't pull the plug on yourself, they will let you kill yourself. That's how the community is. Okay. In the SEAL teams, when you're in the SEAL teams, if you don't raise your hand and say, I'm not really ready for this, this is a little bit above where I'm qualified for or what I'm capable of, they will let you kill yourself. I want everybody to understand that basic underwater demolition school has pretty much been the same for the last 50 years. The other point that I want to hit home with is this training is kindergarten level. Everything you do in training is kindergarten level. So if you can't get through this basic training, for SEALs, you will go to the SEAL teams and you will die. You will be in situations a hundred times worse than anything you were in the SEAL training. You will be in the middle of the ocean with no lifeguards, no safety swimmers, nothing. And if you get in trouble, the only person out there is to save yourself. And if you can't save yourself, you will die. So understand this. There's a lot of times when you got your nuts hung out in the wind in the SEAL teams and... Mm, if you can't pass this little stuff you got to do in buds, you're going to die when you get to the SEAL teams or you're going to kill a bunch of people. So they didn't stop him. Ain't nobody pulling the plug on you at buds. I don't care if you got a bone sticking out of your leg. They're not going to pull you out of training to stop you. When he was struggling out of the cold ocean at the end of Hell Week, leader shook his hand, gave him a pizza, told him to get some rest. He went back to his barracks, laid down on the floor, and a few hours later his heart stopped beating and he died. Here's a couple of my concerns that I asked when this initially happened. I got a bunch of kids in training. I said, where, where was his roommate at? So after Hell Week, you have to have a roommate. And you have to sleep with the door open. There was a couple things that we had to do. And they woke you up every hour 
to just make sure you were still doing good. So I'm not quite sure what happened in this situation, how he was in a room by himself without a roommate. That's beyond me. Okay. So a couple simple things. Second thing is, if my man was struggling that bad after hell week, I'd have got up and took my ass to the hospital. Okay. Now, we just talked about he was gurgling and throwing up blood, blah, 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 blah. Some of this is self-preservation. Just going to say that. Okay? At some point, you got to raise your hand and say, hey, I'm having a problem. That same afternoon, another man who survived hell week had to be incubated. Two more were hospitalized in the evening. All right. Let's talk about this a little bit. I want you to understand that when I went to pool comp, I saw 40 people come out of the swimming pool unconscious. Of those 40, about 15 of them required CPR to come back to life. Nobody died. I want you all to understand that getting incubated is not that big a deal in SEAL training. Okay, Getting hospitalized is not that big a deal in SEAL training. It's the job. Okay, The job is really hard. You're going to have some shit happen. We also, in the class behind me, had two deaths in the swimming pool in a matter of two weeks. All right, One dude was underwater for eight seconds and died. He had weak genes. You're going to hear me say weak genes a lot. Like he had weak genes. You go unconscious for eight seconds and they get you out of the water and you die, then that was your time to die. Okay? Allah and his crew came and got you. All right? Allah's will. I'm a big believer in Allah's will. Right? Like when it's your time, it's your time to go. All right? Just how it is. The SEAL teams have faced criticism for decades, both from the outside and from their own Navy leadership that their selection course known as basic underwater demolition school SEAL training or BUDS is too difficult, too brutal, and often causes concussions, broken bones, dangerous infections, and near drowning. Since 1953, at least 11 men have died. I'm going to put this into perspective. At least 11 men have died in training. Okay. All right. I'm fine with that number, 11. You know, no one wants to lose any life. Understand this. When you in the SEAL teams... 90% of the training you do is level five training, which means level five is death is imminent. So as an officer who's planning all these training evolutions, my whole job is to try to mitigate death that could come from the training that we're currently doing. Be that parachuting, underwater demolitions, scuba diving, like you name it, shooting and moving and communicating in the woods at night. Death is imminent. They know some people are going to die doing this training. Okay. So what happens is if you have a a death in training, there's a review. Did you follow all the procedures to try to mitigate death as best you can? Yes, you did. Okay? Then shit happens. Motherfucker had weak genes. Same shit I said before. Okay? But understand this. 1953, that's uh, roughly 70 years. They've had 11 people die. Okay? I told you about two that happened when I was in training. So two of those 11 happened when I was in training. All right? But understand this. Everything we do in the SEAL teams is level five training. Death is imminent. That means people are going to die doing the training. Notice I haven't said a single thing about combat. Okay? I'm not talking about combat. I'm just talking about training here. This training, people are going to die. All right? So let's get that out of the way. Too hard, too brutal. I'm going to tell you this. They've cranked it up at SEAL training right now. That's just how it is. It got cranked up. You got a bunch of dudes coming back. They've been a bunch of war veterans. Okay, they think they need to be a little bit harder. They cranked it up. They added rucksacks. The army took the rucksacks away. Okay, fact of the matter is, if you want to be a Navy SEAL, you go through it. For just as long as the SEAL teams who perform some of the military's most dangerous, most difficult missions, including lightning fast hostage rescues and killing of high level targets like Osama bin Laden, have insisted having a bare knuckles rite of passage is vital for producing the kind of unflinching fighters the teams need. They just said two of the hardest missions and they want us to go to a cake baking class and find some cats that can pull off these missions. That's not how it works. Okay, not how it works. Without buds, they argue, there could be no seals. All right, I'm just going to tell you, without hard-ass training, you don't have hard-ass men. Okay, or women. We ain't had a woman yet, but I'm going to throw that out there. Privately, they talk about training casualties as the cost of doing business. A former Navy SEAL, David Goggins, wrote in his memoirs about a sailor who drowned during his hell week. Soon after that, he wrote, an instructor told his class, this is the world you live in. He's not the first. He won't be the last in your line of work. That's the truest statement in the world. When I checked in the SEAL Team 8, I was told, listen, man, within six months to a year, you're going to know somebody that dies and you're going to know him well. 
You have to be able to put that behind you and you have to be able to move on and carry out the task at hand. Maybe a year and a half later, one of my good buddies, my shooting buddy in SQT, Chad Burkhardt, unfortunately fell out of a helicopter and perished. Okay? It hit home. It's not long. You're not in long. Notice we ain't said nothing about combat. We ain't said nobody about getting shot, killed, shot up, none of that. We're talking about training. You train hard in peacetime so that you don't bleed in wartime. All right? But remember what I said. Every training we do, 90% of it is level five. Death is imminent. BUDS is hardly the only dangerous selection course in the military. Many Army Special Forces soldiers and Air Force pilots have also died in training. Believe that. Those 11 pale in comparison to the aviation pipeline's death rate. I'm just telling you right now. But see, they die flying a plane, and the so-called brutality of it isn't as great. But they have more death. I guarantee you the pilots have three or four times, maybe, 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 shit, they probably got ten times as many deaths as the SEAL teams do. All right? After Stephen Mullen died, the SEAL teams appeared to try to deflect blame from the course and frame the incident as a freak occurrence. Though Seaman Mullen had coughed up blood for days and needed oxygen. The Navy announced that he and the man who was incapacitated were not actively training when they reported symptoms and neither had experienced an accident or an unusual incident during Hell Week. Hell Week in itself is an unusual uh, incident. So the fact that they kind of got done with Hell Week and got secured and didn't have a watch on them, I'm not sure exactly what was going on there. I told you in the beginning, I feel that was a major major problem that they didn't have a roommate and they didn't have the 45-minute or hour watch come by every day. Uh, official cause of death was bacterial pneumonia. Seaman Mullen's family said the true case was the course itself in which instructors routinely drove candidates to dangerous states of exhaustion, injury, and medical staff grew so accustomed to seeing suffering that they failed to hospitalize him or even monitor him once Hell Week was over. I agree with her. They failed to monitor him over Hell Week was over. We're going to talk a little bit about the performance enhancing drugs he was doing because I kind of feel when we get into this uh, drug bit down a little bit later in the article, we're going to talk a little bit about kind of something's going on that's causing all these cats to get sight because I've had guys uh, around the clock in training since 2005 and you may have a couple sight classes, a couple sight guys, a class, but you ain't having whole classes of sight. So my, my kind of hypothesis is they're using something that's making them a little bit more susceptible to sight, or you just got some weak gene people going to buds, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later also. They killed him, his mother said, uh, Regina Mullen said, who's a registered nurse, said in an interview, they say it's training, but it's torture. And then they didn't even give them the proper medical care. They treat these guys worse than they are allowed to treat prisoners of war. Okay, right? Maybe a fair statement. Seaman Mullen's death immediately resurfaced the old questions about whether the curriculum of intentional hardship goes too far. Soon these old questions were complicated by something new. When the Navy gathered Seaman Mullen's belongings, they discovered syringes and performance enhancing drugs in his car. So let's, let's go back here. We start pointing fingers. We're going to learn a little bit later in the article that, that I'm sorry, Mrs. Mullins, but you knew that your son was using performance enhancing drugs. You knew as a nurse that those performing enhancing drugs could have side effects that could cause him very bad outcomes in SEAL training. So it is what it is. My man rolled the dice and he came out unlucky. Captain in charge of Buzz immediately ordered an investigation. Soon about 40 candidates had their tested positive or had admitted using steroids or other drugs in violation of U.S. Navy regulations. The Navy has not tied the sailor's death to drugs. The service is expected to release a report on the training death and the drug use in the fall. A Navy spokesman declined to comment on Seaman Mullen's death or the allegation of widespread drug use, saying it would be inappropriate to do so before the report was released and Seaman Mullen's family is briefed on the findings. Okay, so they're just trying to be respectful. But here's what I'm going to tell you from what I know. Everybody was using HGH. They had a, some steroid use. I didn't use a single drug. I made it through buds. I showed up out of shape. If you a tough ass dude, you can be you can get it done. All right. Have they cranked it up to another level? Yes. Ask anybody that was with me, they'll tell you I had a special buds experience. Okay, my my experience was quite special. All right. So I would argue that my buds class, my experience was probably on par or harder than these dudes went through, and I didn't touch a single drug. I did eat my my bananas and my ice cream every night. Though. I had my ice cream sandwich and two bananas. I took my ass to bed and got some sleep. 
Still, the prevalence of drugs at Bud's has some men in the top reaches of the na- seals deeply unnerved, not just because drugs may have contributed to the death of the sailor, but also because they see their spread and lack of discipline and order it implies as a threat to the entire SEAL organization that could grow into unpredicted and ugly ways. So let's be honest, man. We talking about dudes at the cutting edge of toughness. When I was in, steroids was a problem. Growth hormone was a problem. That shit ain't going nowhere. When you asking dudes to go down range and use muscles to kill people, hey, I'm just telling you, it is what it is. It's part of the business. Sailors who enter the program bolstered by steroids, hormones, can push harder, recover faster, and probably beat out sailors who are trying to become SEALs while clean. Here's what I'm going to tell you, okay? That statement in itself is complete bullshit because you're not competing against nobody in buds. Unlike the other selection courses where you got, you're competing against other people, buds is you're competing against time, man. You got to pass four-mile time runs. You got to pass two-mile time swims. And the times ain't crazy. 30-minute, four-mile time run, 75-minute, two-mile uh, two ocean swim. You got to pass the O course in 10 minutes. You got to pass all your written tests, and you got to pass your uh, competency tests like pool comp and underwater knot tying and stuff like that. So drugs ain't helping you get through SEAL training. They may help you feel a little bit better. They may help you run a little bit faster. They may help you like get a little bit, a little bit ahead numbers-wise, but you're not competing against other sailors. So the only person you're really competing against in buds is yourself. So they're trying to paint this article to make it seem like you got an advantage over somebody. You might have an advantage, but your advantage isn't taking nothing from them. They don't have a quota of number of people that get to graduate from a SEAL class. So it is what it is. Who are trying to become SEALs while clean. One senior leader said with multiple combat deployments to Iraq and Afghanistan, the inevitable effect, he said, is a course that's designed to select the very best will end up selecting only the very best cheaters and steadily fill the teams with war fighters who view rules as optional. Okay? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I believe that, but I also know when I was in the SEAL teams, uh, rules were there as rough guidelines to firing fams because at the end of the day you gotta win because if you don't win people die and so I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by 6 any day of the week what am I gonna do with guys like that in a place like Afghanistan said the leader a guy who can do 100 push ups but can't make an ethical decision 100% the Navy so far has been officially silent about the discovery drug use at Bud's details of Seaman Mullen's death and the subsequent drug sweep Many of them reported here for the first time are based on interviews with Navy leaders, medical staff, senior uh, enlisted SEALs, recent BUDS candidates. All of them spoke on the conditions that they would not be identified by name because they were not authorized to comment publicly. Well, look, I'm a comment publicly, okay? The shit is what it is. All right, without comprehensive drug testing, there is no way to assess the full extent of the drug use in the program, but more than a dozen current and former candidates describe a culture in which drugs have been deeply embedded in the selection course over the last decade. Okay, I went to Bud's 30 years ago. I'm just telling you they were there then. It ain't no, it ain't no new shit, all right? Let's call it what it is. It ain't new, okay? Now, they got some new high-speed shit that they're taking, and we'll read about that a little bit later, that may be causing all this sipe and all this other stuff, which to me, I mean, you roll dice, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. SEAL leaders say they don't have the authority to start testing program to attack the problem. They formally requested permission from the Navy in June to start testing all candidates, but are still awaiting a response. Okay, I'm just here to tell you, you telling me some Navy SEALs can't figure out a way to test some people? That don't make no sense to me. We can go all over the world and do what we do, so if the United States Navy SEALs can't figure out the drug test, a way to drug test people, but we can go all over the world and do bad things, I don't know about that one. Meanwhile, drugs are there. Yeah, they testing their ass off right now. You stupid if you're using drugs and buds, okay? One young sailor who went through buds and mace said that many would-be SEALs had come to believe that the course was too hard to complete without buds, okay? This lends myself to the pussification of America, all right? If you think you got to use drugs to get done, get through buds, then you ain't tough enough to get through buds. This comes back to why we're going to see the numbers in this article later, why the graduation rate is 14%. I think that's directly attributed to call to duty and a bunch of losers thinking they can be Navy SEALs and showing up and getting their heads blown off. 
Despite Seaman Mullen's death, he said some sailors were still using illicit performing enhancing drugs, in particular a group of unregulated supplements called uh, SARMs that are difficult to detect. Okay, that's, so that's some kind of new cutting edge shit that modifies and releases uh, steroid enhancing drugs within your body. It's like a stimulator to get your body to produce some stuff in your body. You know, we probably don't have no studies on it, but I guarantee you that shit's making your lungs more susceptible to sight. Once again, all the sipe. You using drugs, you got sipe, I'm tying them together, you doing stupid shit. Okay? It's hard to say what role in performance enhancing drugs played in one death when there are so many other complicating factors. Dr. Matthew, the chief science officer, United States Navy Anti-Doping Agency. Even so, he said the chemicals some sailors are relying on can interfere with the function of the heart, liver, and other critical organs that are already under incredible stress from brutal training. Yes, my point exactly. You doing drugs, you in SEAL training, you asking for bad fucking cocktail, bruh. That's why all the sipe is coming, that's why your lungs ain't working, that's why your ass is struggling to graduate, okay? So, it comes back around, the, you can't graduate from training with drug without drugs, but really the drugs are the reason you ain't graduate. Kind of stupid, ain't it? Enough people in the community are doping, he said. It spreads risk, even though those who are clean. As the level of competition rises, the more people are pushed to exhaustion and injury. That's the dumbest shit in the world. There ain't no competition at Buds. Okay, there ain't. It's you against the course. There's nobody, you're not competing against nobody to graduate. Nobody. So they're trying to make it seem like you're getting an edge with drugs. You're not getting an edge with drugs. You're not. You, you may help yourself graduate, but you ain't hurting nobody else with taking drugs other than the long-term implications of you're going to get the SEAL teams and do dumb shit like, Dan, like Brown did, okay? It, it makes it much more, it makes, it makes it that much harder for people doing the right thing to shine. That's bullshit. Straight bullshit. No one cares about that shit. Navy leaders say they are determined to correct the problems. Buzz now is required. All candidates to be medically monitored for 24 hours after Hell Week. Leaders have dialed back some of the most abusive course requirements. Several SEALs were quietly removed from instructor positions after Seaman Mullen's death. Yeah, they took the rucks away. Okay, who cares? The broader questions about the punishment, the nature of the course, what role it played in the proliferating drugs and death of young sailors may prove harder to address. Okay, let's, let's talk about this shit. Proliferation of drugs and death. There's been 11 deaths in 70 fucking years. Okay, do the math. Roughly one a decade. 1.4 a decade. All right, it ain't that prolific. It truly ain't. All right. Navy has made hundreds of changes over the years meant to improve safety, increase graduation rates at the same time SEALs who run the course have quietly resisted anything they see as lowering the standards. So no matter how much the Navy has tried to make buds easier, it seems to only get harder. I'm going to argue that the people going to Buds are weaker. Buds hasn't gotten any harder. They ain't dropped the times on the runs. Nothing's changed in 50 years. The America and the people going to Buds have gotten softer. Thus the decreased graduation rate. And I can say that because it's the truth. Okay? In 1980s, about 40% of the candidates graduated. You want to know why? Because no one knew what a fucking Navy SEAL was in 1980. No one. So the only people going to SEAL training were crazy ass dudes who actually wanted to go do the job and they were tough as shit. Okay, mind you, we're talking about 1980. 50 years later, all right, it's dropped to 26%. That's a direct indication of America. America has dropped to 26%. In 2021, it was just 14%. That's because kids ain't playing outside no more. Kids ain't riding their bikes no more. Kids playing video games all day. They just ain't tough enough for 2022 buds. Seaman Mullins class this year, less than 10% graduated. Okay, because they all on drugs. They got psyched. They doing a bunch of dumb shit, and they not tough enough. When Seaman Mullins started Buds in January, it was his second attempt. First try in August 21. Spent more than a year running, swimming, lifting to prepare. He lasted less than a day. I guess he wasn't ready. I guess he had weak genes. I guess he got his head cut off. Okay? Instructors call the first three weeks of Buds the attrition phase. A mob punishment exercise of frigid waters 
Harassment meant to wash out anyone lacking strength, endurance, mental fortitude. Individuals and their instructors call them turds because they go down the toilet when they flush that bad boy. The first day, the instructors put candidates through a gauntlet of running, crawling, sit-ups, push-ups on the hot sand. The sand ain't that hot, okay? With no breaks, you get tons of fucking breaks. Every evolution, you have a break. So, like, let's not let's not make this crazier than this shit it really is. See, my mom's mother said late in the afternoon, the men were racing in teams carrying a 170-pound inflatable boat divided by 70 people. Fucking 21 pounds. Come on, man. Over the heads when Seaman Mullen passed out. Got heat stroke. I don't know what it is about the sun in San Antonio, but that sun will fucking get you. It almost got me, but I took precautions and ran my ass out of the ocean. Called his mother from an ambulance a short time later, explained that he had not had a drop of water all day. That's his fault. Okay, because there's fucking water everywhere. I drink water all the time. Put a little salt in your water. That's some bullshit. He ain't drink no water all day. He's a fucking idiot. He's one of them cats from Yale who ain't very smart, but they brilliant. When he fell, he told her, instructor hurled insults at his limp body, told him to get up. When he didn't respond, the medics measured his temperature, 104, sent him to the hospital with heat stroke. Let me tell you a story, folks. One of my dudes, not going to say his name, on supplements, Thermogen, wanted to run faster so he could pass his four-mile time run. The motherfucker passed because he was in front of me. I failed. He promptly passed out. They stuck a probe up his ass and he had 105.4 degree temperature and climbing fast. I was forced to grab that motherfucker's ball sack and pack his groin with ice. A couple other of my classmates packed his armpits. We covered him in ice and they took him to the hospital. He was on Thermogen. He passed the run. But he almost died. Okay? Now he ended up graduating. We got him off that thermogen bullshit. But I'm just telling you, it's not uncommon for a marathon runner's body temperature to be 104 degrees during a damn marathon. Do your homework. So we're not talking about no crazy shit here. Okay? 104 degrees, send him to the hospital, he passed out. Of course, the instructor's gonna talk shit to you if you fall over. Heat stroke, concussion, fractures, muscle tears, lung issues are common at buds. One Navy medical employee at the SEAL training compound has said, but the injuries are often dealt with internally, which avoid scrutiny from the outside of the SEALs. Often, the employee said, injured candidates are enc- to encouraged to quit the course voluntarily instead of being pulled out by medical staff, and their injuries are never formally reported to the Navy command that oversees workplace incidences. Here's what I'm going to tell you, folks. There's a lot of cats that have graduated with buds with broken bones. Just going to tell you, folks. Leg broken, arm broken, shoulder broken, You know, graduated, neck broken, okay? Just telling you, they ain't tough enough. They got weak genes. Seaman Mullen was assigned to an internal recovery unit where he had four months to mend before a second attempt at Bud's. During that time, he helped care for other candidates recovering in the barracks, according to his mother, whom he regularly, he called regularly for medical advice. Many men were cuffing up bloody uh, bloody fluid from a condition called swimmer-induced pulmonary edema, better known as SIPE. A politically life-threatening ailment that is common among men in training in the frigid waters of buds that SEALs refer to it casually by the name of SIPE. Everything in the fucking military is an acronym. Of course, I'm not walking around saying pulmon- swimming, pulm- induced pulmonary. Ind- Man, it's called SIPE. That's what we call it, okay? The shit is what it is. During his four-month wait, his mother recalled Seaman Mullen started talking to her about performance-enhancing drugs. That's a problem. Men he met in the recovery unit were steroids, human growth hormone. He told her he was considering it. He told her he would have to buy a used car as a place to stash his drugs. All right? Like, I'd have had a heart-to-heart with my son. I'd have probably flown out there and put my foot square up his ass and explain to him the repercussions of doing dumb shit. All right? I'm not being critical of, of what happened. I'm just saying she knew what was going on, so let's not stop pointing fingers here. In all his years playing sports, he had never touched that stuff. Ms. Mullen said, I told him not to do it, but he ended up getting the car and sharing it with a bunch of guys. Bunch of reasons why they all got Skype, okay? Uh, she got a picture of her son. She was shocked at the treatment these guys get. Yeah, you don't want to expose normal medical people to what we go through. Just not a good idea. In a few interviews, SEALs reported knowing of men using drugs during buds as least far back as 2009. I was in the 98. It was there then, 
Okay. The Navy uncovered what senior leaders called a steroid ring in 2012, he said. Bugs began testing students that year, but the test lapsed a few years later. By 2016, former candidates said drugs were back. That's when a 19-year-old, Brandon Casarada, went through Buzz, told his father, retired Navy SEAL senior chief, that drugs were rampant. He refused to do them, but he said the guys that did them definitely had an edge. Yeah, I mean, they had an edge recovery, so what? Three weeks into... Three weeks in, Seaman Casanati collapsed by carrying a boat, she yelled at him to get up. When he couldn't, his father said they made him quit the course. An x-ray later revealed a broken leg. Solid. You know, everybody's case is different. Uh, candidates who don't complete buds often serve out the remainder of their years enlistment in an undesirable, low-level Navy job. That's right, they chip and paint in 32nd Street. Seaman uh, Casanati ended up manning a snack scent counter at a distant base. Such is life, bro. You made the decision, you got to live with it. He was really disheartened. His father said he felt like he had been cheated out of something he'd worked hard for. 2018, Stephen Casanata left a note for his parents criticizing the Navy for his treatment of him, saying he didn't want a military funeral, and then he hurled himself into the tail road of a Navy helicopter. God damn, son. I'm just going to tell you, man, the, the crushing defeat of SEAL training is hard. All right? Your dad's a Navy SEAL, and you don't make it, it's hard. I feel for his parents, man. That's a tough one. Hurled himself into the rotor of a helicopter. Golly, man. That's a bad one, bro. I'm not sure what that has to do with Buds and what we're reading in this article. I think they just wanted to put a little shock and awe factor in the article and just bring in somebody that had died related to training. Okay? In a perverse way, the drug problem at Buds is a natural outgrowth of the mindset of SEALs try to cultivate. According to Benjamin Mill, former list of SEAL who recently published The History of Force, Water Beneath the Wall, SEALs operators who can find unconventional ways to gain an advantage against the enemy, he said in an interview, you want guys who can solve problems in war, guys who know how to play dirty, because war is dirty game. Can't agree with that more. Fuck, you got savages out there trying to figure out how to be more savages. That's exactly right. An unofficial adage of the SEAL teams holds, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. That ain't unofficial. That's the facts, Jack. During Buds, he said the enemy to be outfoxed is the course itself. Exactly what I said earlier, right? You're competing against the course. You ain't competing against no man. No one can do everything the instructors ask, so you have to learn how to cheat and get through. Everyone knows it happens. The point is to learn and how not to get caught. Basically, you're accepting guys who are willing to cheat. You're accepting guys who know how to fucking win at all costs. Call it what it is. We send these motherfuckers into the hardest situations in the world and you want them to come back fucking alive. Yes, they're going to have to fucking do everything they can to fucking win. Add, no surprise the guys are going to turn to drugs. Let me tell you something. I was in the teams, there was motherfuckers doing performance enhancing drugs. It was not rampant because everybody that saw them, they always got fucking hurt. It's no different than the NFL. The dude doing steroids has an ACL tear. The SEAL teams are the same thing. Guy tears up a shoulder. Hmm, what was he doing? He was jacked on steroids and lifting all day. Well, there you go. Okay. Seaman Mullen showed up for his second attempt at Buzz in January with a fresh determination and a used car. By the end of the second week, he was spitting up bloody fluid and struggling to breathe. I would argue that all the performance enhancing drugs he's on and the SARS and everything else probably affected his lungs' ability to process the fluid. This ain't a damn article about what's going on in SEAL training. It's an article about this young man's decisions to use performance enhancing drugs, which caused him to be fucking having sight, which caused him to fucking die. I said, go to the hospital right away, his mother recalled. He said, no, Ma, if you want, if you want to go to the hospital, they'll make you quit first. Besides, it's just sight. Okay, fair enough. Miss Mullen said her son on the advice of SEAL candidates started secretly taking the erectile dysfunction drug Viagra, which was against the rules, but used by SEALs as a potential treatment for sight. He recovered enough to keep training. All right, so let me fucking tell you something. Okay? They got a thing called a fucking z pack, And I know a bacterial infection may not be treated by a z pack. But I'm taking fucking Viagra for sight. You probably got a fucking problem because it's an erectile dysfunction drug that fucks with your blood pressure and everything else. So I'm seeing a cascade of dumbass fucking decisions that have led to this young man's fucking perishing. 
Alright What we should really be talking about is What the fuck was this young man doing And what the fuck was he thinking Then came hell week Days of cold water Sand pounding runs 200 miles With only about 5 hours of sleep in 5 days Absolutely It's called hell week Sipe came raging back The fluid pulling his lungs Started drowning from the inside Seaman Mellon followed behind on runs According to cannons Who were there with him Instructors signaled him out For remediation Extra put up sit ups Plunging into the surf May have made his conditions worse Yeah Let me tell you something I finished all the runs in the back too I got all that same treatment But I wasn't on the performance enhancing drugs So I didn't get sight He collapsed at one point And the instructor kicked him repeatedly Told him to get up The other candidate said Instead the sailor struggled back to his feet If you lay on the ground The instructor's gonna kick you They ain't kicking you hard Don't make it seem like This motherfucker was kicking off For an NFL field Or a kickoff team This motherfucker probably just Touched him with his foot Told him to get the fuck up Okay. There's not a lot of sympathy in this institution. Just ain't. Navy medics are pre- present for every moment of hell week, giving candidates medical checks. Anyone whose vital signs so dangerous to change gets sidelined, medical officer said. But the officer added that the medical staff avoid interfering with pain and suffering that are the purpose of buds. By Wednesday, medicals were intermittently given semen more oxygen in the back of a medical truck. So they liked him. They liked him because they're letting him ride in the medical truck and they're giving him some oxygen. So what? My dude Dale Wooden ran in the road in the back of the van for Hell Week. We'd open the door. He'd be in there in a blanket waving at us. I didn't give a shit. He'd been through three Hell Weeks. Didn't care. Let him ride in the van for Hell Week. Dale's a fucking awesome ass dude. Don't give a shit. Okay? In any other job pushing people to exhaustion while fluids flood their lungs would seem reckless. It has been happening in Hell Week for so long that the practice has become somewhat normal. Yep. Remember, level five, death is imminent. According to Mr. McMillan, the historian, he went through the Hell Week in 2001, said a man in his class who had flu in his lungs was given medication through a nebulizer. A practice, Mullen said, was not uncommon. For a few hours later, while the class was swimming in a human chain in the pool, the man slipped from Mullen's grasp, sank to the bottom, and died. Okay? Shit happens. People die. Got weak genes. Okay? Seaman Mullen was determined to persevere on Friday morning at the completion of Hell Week. He and 20 other remaining men emerged from the freezing water. He was too weak to walk on his own, so he staggered into the other team's arms, his eyes filled with tears of joy and relief. After a short speech by the Admiral in charge, came medical checks. The class assisted Seaman Mullen go first. The other candidate said he was stunned when his friends emerged from the check five minutes later. So he was told he was fine. Okay? So if you, here's another question, man. If you felt like this dude was that bad, how come no one was in the room with him? Hey, listen, I'm just going to tell you this. This shit ain't nothing new. Kyle became so swollen with edema during Hell Week that his mother said she could barely recognize him. I myself was swollen with edema. I could barely recognize myself, and my feet were this big. My feet were the size of basketballs after Hell Week. That's what happens when you run 200 miles, you swim like 30, you paddle boats for another 60 miles during Hell Week. Your feet fucking swell up. Edema is everywhere. It's a natural cause of the joy of Hell Week. Seaman uh, Mullins was coughing up so much, he soon filled a 32-ounce bottle of Gatorade with bloody sputum, according to his autopsy, but by the time there was no medical training present, this is where I come to the shit, like I don't know what the fuck they were doing, straight up. Medical staff had gone home, had gone home after Hell Week finished. Instead, according to the candidates, Mrs. Mullins, who spoke several other student class were there, men were watched by newly arrived Bud's candidates called White Shirts. Hey, bro, when I was there, our doors were wide open. We were sleeping with the doors open. Someone came by every hour and you had a roommate. So I'm not sure what happened in this paragraph right here. It don't make a lot of sense to me, but something happened. Okay. A few hours later, one of the white shirts called medical staff. Uh, they called 911, civ- civilian ambulance, no pulse. Yeah, he died. That's what happened. Next morning, five men in white dress uniforms appeared at Miss Mullins' family home in New Jersey. Opened the door. My son's never coming home, is he? Hey, man, that's a hard that's a hard lick to take right there, Mrs. Mullins. I apologize. I know this article's a little critical of some of your son's decisions, but I don't wish that on my worst enemy, man. I'm sorry. I thank you for your service. I appreciate the, the debt and gratitude you paid to the country. In the months since, the family has pushed for accountability. The military is shied, shielded by lawyer, laws from wrongdoing death suits. Instead, Mrs. Mullins said her goal is to have Congress impose impending oversight over buds. Good luck. Officers in charge of buds have removed some of the most punishing aspects of the course recent clamping down on pre-dawn workouts, runs, heavy backpacks, six hours of sleep a night are required in all weeks. But hell week, outside auditors have been brought in to watch instructors. A higher percentage of sales are now making a cut. Yeah, they got it up to back up to 26%. Woohoo! 
But on the beach, sailors say the problems continue. A month after Seaman died, there was another close call after a late night training in the frigid water. Stop calling it frigid water. The water's cold, but it ain't frigid. Okay, It ain't 30 degrees. One sailor, cold, wet, hungry, and exhausted, i.e. normally in training, started shivering violently and became unresponsive when the huddle arms of the sailors trying to keep him warm. According to the other sailors were there. Sailor men called a bud medical officer, but once again, they said there was no answer. They put their classmen in a hot shower, called 911, and able to get them some milk. It's called hypothermia, folks. Motherfucker, a lot of people get hypothermia all the time. The next, the next morning, two sailors said the instructors let the class know they were not happy, punished them for calling 911. Ain't no 911 in war, folks. The sailors said the instructors made the class do long bouts of push-ups whenever anyone dropped from exhaustion. The instructors made a man who had been treated in the hospital hypothermia plug into the surf again. Beat your friends for doing dumb shit. That's how it works. And this is what I didn't understand. The article's over. Don't talk no more about what happened. Doesn't talk about drugs. Doesn't talk about nothing in the SEAL teams. You read the article. Exposes a culture of brutality, cheating, and drugs. All we talked about was a couple situations in SEAL training where some people die. That's why I didn't really understand the article. Okay? I think the New York Times is grasping on this one. I think they went out there and got somebody that made a bunch of poor decisions with performance-enhancing drugs, and it lended itself to him becoming susceptible to sight, and his tough ass made it through hell week, but then he died. I think it's a, it's a closed case. Now, were some people grossly negligent of medical care after hell week? I say yes, yes, absolutely. How the fuck did he not have a roommate, and how the fuck did he not have hourly watch looking at him every hour? I don't know, okay? How were there not medical staff on hand to, to treat him immediately? I don't know, okay? But I also know this. The human body can endure a lot more than the human mind thinks it can. So ain't nobody there to tell nobody they can't do something or they're not good enough to make it. My summation is, crazy-ass article. I don't think it has anything to do with all this shit they're talking about in the title. Hey, man, hope you enjoyed this review. I know I'm probably going to get some hate mail, some crazy people calling me on this one. Bring the fire, bro. I just gave you what I thought. I gave you the raw truth. And as always, man, that just is what it is. Okay, I got a bunch of dudes and buds right now. If you're using performance enhancing drugs, you're a fucking idiot because it weakens your body in other realms and allows you more susceptible for shit that will kill you or will cause you not to graduate. Man, I hope you enjoyed this article review. It's my first one. Drop a comment in the comments. I know they're going to fill up. Bring the fire and the pain, man. Hey. Take a quick moment of silence for our man that passed away. It wasn't hard on him. He's dead. Let's take a moment of silence for his mother. Ma'am, thank you for your debt to the country. I don't take this in any disregard or ill repute or any negative light. It was simply an article review. I know somebody's probably going to call and tell you about it, but I'm not being critical of your son or being critical of you. I just think some decisions were made that cost him his life. Hey, if you like this damn article review, smash the subscribe button, hit the ding, ring the bell, do whatever you got to do. You know what we're building around here. We build champions for life.